So we, we've seen this territory before. I was talking to Julia just before the news. I think the Just Stop Oil people also had a list of demands and they wanted a meeting with Michael Gove and thought somehow they were going to get around the Cabinet table and their their um, their balmy ideas would, would make it into government policy. Of course, it didn't. But So that, that point isn't entirely new. But I do find this whole area... Uh, I was about to say bordering on the anti-Israel, but that's kind of what it is, right? Where do we even begin with some of the, the horrors that we've seen coming out of the local election results, let alone the past six or seven months? I fear it's not just a hatred of Israel. I fear this goes much deeper, much older. This is just a plain old hatred of Jews, right? I mean, this is one of the oldest hatreds there have ever been. Um, you know, I'm reminded of that kind of sad idea that whilst um, they were being subjugated by Pharaoh, one due turn to another and said, well, at least we're getting our bad luck out of the way early in history. <laughs> Sadly, it's not It's not meant to be. You know, when they yeah. said never again after the Holocaust, well, what's happening now? You're seeing the same kind of protest on US campuses led by idiots, now followed by UK campus idiots yeah. attacking people who look visibly Jewish. You've got police officers, sadly, here in London, saying to someone, well, sir, you, you're clearly very visibly Jewish, so I'm going to let you cross the street here. It leads to another bad joke, doesn't it? Why did the Jew cross the road? Well, you shouldn't need to be asking why not. True. You know, it's this kind of horrible sickness that we've got festering. And I think with this, this Muslim vote organisation, I think there's a real problem here, that people are self-appointing as community leaders. I think this happens an awful lot uh, when it comes to Muslim communities, plural, in, in Britain, that people self-appoint themselves as speaking for all Muslims. Mm -hmm. Four million or so people of the Muslim faith in this country. Some have white skin, some have brown skin. People are men, people are women. It's a very large group. And this idea that these people get to, to pr pretend and proclaim that they speak for all Muslims is a very dangerous, damaging thing. It is a, a, an increasingly high number. And sadly, it seems to be younger Muslims as well who have more kind of concerning beliefs than people who've been here a lot longer. And that leads to the question, why? Where is that coming from? I would yeah. say places like TikTok. It comes from sure. these other so we need to follow the money as to where these people are getting these kind of dangerous ideas from and the useful idiots in the kind of so-called elite universities like Cambridge uh, who are spouting this kind of nonsense as well. Let's, well, let's, I mean, we're going to continue to ask that question this afternoon as well, James, about what is the, you know, what is behind the hatred of Israel, stroke hatred of Jews as well, because I think that is, you know, it's all part of it. There's no other group of people, no other race of people, no other country you'll get away with such sort of brazen stereotyping and bile and venomous hatred as you would with Israel. For some reason, it's a free pass. I mentioned that list before about all manner of human rights abuses around the globe. I never saw anybody protest uh, outside the, the, the embassies of China for what was going on there. I'm sure one or two characters might have shown up. Good for them, but very rare. We didn't see anything like this. No, no, absolutely not. It is this oldest thing. One of the demands of this of this self-appointed group as well is to kind of go with this definition of the phrase Islamophobia um, and trying to equate this with anti-Semitism. As mm. we said, the problem with that is that with Jewish people, there is a religious element, but there is also a, a racial ethnic element as well, Jews as, as a people. And that isn't the case when it comes to things like Islam or Christianity, where anybody can kind of convert to those religions, can adopt those ideas. And as a set of ideas like capitalism or communism or liberalism, they are ideas that can and should be challenged. And there are good things in them. There are bad things in them. Sure. And in a healthy pluralist society, we should be able to say that. But of course, if you adopt something like Islamophobia, that is in some ways equating towards a blasphemy law where you can't have any criticism of a set of beliefs. Now, again, some religions have kind of political rules in them as well, legal codes and these other things. And this is a conversation that we've, we've shied away from having about how these sorts of legal, religious, political, economic even codes can kind of cohere with one another, right? Again, there are millions of people in this country who are Muslims who are decent, nice, wonderful, moderate, passionate, patriotic Brits, and they are being the biggest victims and let down by a, a very vocal minority of people who seem to have not only very concerning views about gay rights, about women's rights, but as we're talking today, mm -hmm. about the state of Israel and Jews more generally. Yeah, 